Roger Federer to serve to Marit Safin to get us underway in the first of the semi-finals. Can Federer take one more step to defending his crown? Very crisp, right from the word go. This is one of his favourite shots. The backhand down the line, Safin. Again, not the quickest serve on second serve, 167, but plenty of kick. And even though Saffin's a tall man, he was forced to reach and reach high. That was the serve he came up with against Agassi with monotonous regularity. And remarkably, it's about the same speed. He must have served a dozen aces that measured between 203 and 207 kilometres an hour. And that one was 203. He's got plenty of supporters in the crowd and they've got plenty of fuel to keep them going. Looks as though they might have had a touch of the sun. <laughs> Well, it was warm again today in Melbourne, but tonight just ideal conditions for these players, hopefully, to bring their A game. Let's see if the big man has brought his A serve from the word go. Looks like he might have. That was just a mere 209 for his first serve of the match. Little oo goes up amongst the crowd. It is a thing of beauty, that one-handed backhand. That was an opportunity there, Safin, to do something much more than that. He went up the middle of the court with a short ball, so a little tension in uh, the arm of Safin. Interesting choice in the first game of the match. Well, he's capable of so many options, isn't he, Federer? Slice short, slice deep, over it with a topspin and angle. Has the full range at his disposal. The comparative time on court going into this match so far in this championship, Federer just 7 hours and 46 minutes for his five matches. And Safin at 10.22. The longest of his matches was against Olivia Rockus in the round of 16. 
three and three quarter hours. You won't miss too many of those this evening. Ease with his return of serve, Jeff. He looks as though he's doing it on his ear, and that one was at 200 kilometres an hour. Well, he's a wonderful reader of the play, and he's a terrific mover around the court. Most underrated in that department, he glides around. Let's Anxious moments for the big man from Russia, but he holds his opening service game and that will ease the nerves. One game over. Classic Federer point. You can see there how Safin moved parallel to the baseline there. And he needs to move more diagonally tonight if he's going to cut that shot off. Otherwise he's going to be so far out of court he won't be able to recover for the next shot. So 557 aces last year, Federer. Not far away, uh, not the best on tour, but certainly inside the top 10. So in every facet of the game, he rates in the top five or six in everything he does. All too long. Safin served 695 aces. He was fourth best on the tour as opposed to Federer's seventh best on tour as far as aces served last year. Love game to the world number one. He's conceded just the one point on his serve so far. We're on serve early in this semi-final, which could turn out to be a classic. Good pace on the Safin forehand down the line there, causing Federer to make a slightly late contact. Here he is trying to go cross court and he's late. Had to hurry the shot. And when you make a late contact, you hit it long. Right on the money. 
And I think the speed gun may just have underestimated that one a little bit. It came up at 114. Good play from Saffin. And that is serving and volleying. He's going to have to mix up his service games. He can't allow Federer to get into a groove. Federer there just trying to block the ball back deep. But of course, if he's worried that Saffin will serve and volley from time to time, he's going to have to look up and change his mind. And that keeps him off a rhythm. One very encouraging factor for Marat Safin in his first two service games, the amount of first serves he's getting into play. He's had 13 points on serve, 11 of those have been first services. Needs to do that right from the outset to put pressure on the world's number one. That serve, he hits better than Safin. The slider, his toss is better. You can see the racket coming across the ball right to left. Safin doesn't get the same width when he goes for that serve. Well, he can do them wide. He can do them down the middle. Merritt shows his football skills. But that was the only contact he was going to make with that ball. Federer is having trouble getting the first serve into play. When it does go in, he wins every point. And occasionally he's having trouble getting the second serve in as well. well Safin there was standing inside the baseline, threatening. And Federer trying to keep him back, going for depth on the serve. It's a little too much depth there. Oh. <laughs> As he did in his first service game, Roger Federer concedes just the one point, and that was of his own doing a double fault. It's 3 2 on serve, first set. To 16, his quickest for the match, Barrett Saffin. And they tell me that Ken's birthday party turned into a pretty big shindig. It started out as a low key affair and just got bigger. Well, when he gets going, he doesn't mind a good time, Kent. As Federer did in the previous game, Safin starts with two aces. One percent his first service ratio at present, Marit Safin. That will naturally drop throughout the course of this match. But he, if he can hover around high 60s up to 70, he gives himself a hope. Great serve. Nothing Federer could do about that. Both players holding their serve and holding it comfortably at this early stage of the semi final. Last game with the old balls.
Well, that's what Federer is capable of. The approach shot from Safin, not too bad. It's underspun. The depth is good. Federer just takes it on the half volley and rips it down the line as easy as you like. Made it look bread and butter. Good aggressive play by the big man. It was indeed, and it started from the return of serve. The Took control of the second serve and kept control of the point. And that's how he's got to go about his business. He can't let Federer take control of a point. Safin has to take the initiative first whenever possible. Tiny little opening here for Safin. 15-30. And a look at a second serve. And he decided to have a swish at it. As he does with monotonous regularity. So often Federer on the big points comes up with a good serve. Challenged, and he answered. Federer holds and leads 4-3. Only one other man has ever done it in the open era, and that man is the great Rod Laver. The reason he won three in a row in 1969 is because he won four in a row. The Grand Slam. Can this man do it in years to come? Good having new balls to serve with, Jeff, but the problem is they come back quicker as well. Indeed. Well, he needs a first serve here and a big one. Lob 30. That's what the doctor ordered. 15 30. Characteristically, Roger Federer expressing disappointment in the conventional way. Shows how tense he is, I think, Peter. He understands that his opponent here today is capable of plenty. Oh, there was hesitation there from Safin. Two minds, I think, initially looking to go cross court. Changed his mind, and in the end, not enough racket head speed. It was a nothing shot. 
So the first break point opportunity for either player in the eighth game of the first set. Yes. Saffin again comes up with a big serve, that one at 2.15. Just shy of his quickest, 2.17. He was just leaning slightly to cover the forehand Federer. As a result, a little late. I don't need something. Terrific stuff. What a get from Federer in the end. It was just a little short, but still Safin had some work to do. Gave it plenty. As Federer did in the game before, Safin digs himself out of a little hole. His first service percentage is astronomical at the moment. 85%. That is extraordinary. It's four games all. Well, we said he had to keep close in the first set. He's done that, so the pressure builds. Fourth ace for the world number one. Four apiece in that count. That's that forehand we spoke of. Incredible pace and top spin just drops so fast. Well, again, as the Saf and Federer just prepared to mix it up a little bit so that he. He doesn't allow Safran just to block the return high and deep and start the point from a neutral position. Federer continues to power on. He has only lost three points on serve in this first set. 5-4. Safran serving to stay in the set. Excellent play, Safin. His move to the net was perfectly timed. The moment he had Federer stretched and defending here, off he comes, Safin. You can see clearly he needs to take time away from Federer, recovery-wise. Quickly in, excellent volley. I think I've worked out the reason for Marat's good forward movement in this match, Jeff. It's that jewellery around his neck. <laughs> He's pulling his weight forward all the time. That's the secret. He's been all business thus far. He's been focused on the task at hand, Safin. 220 the previous serve. <laughs> Wasted opportunity, Federer, and he paid the price. By that I mean his return of serve could not have been better. Look at this wonderful return. Safin on the defensive. Federer should have been on top of the net. And he was punished for not taking his opportunity. 
and punished at 147 kilometres per hour. Solid service going from the Russian. That's been the case from both of these players. Like a heavyweight boxing contest in the early rounds, just jabbing and moving, and no big punches landed so far. Feeling each other out, seeing what the opponent's got to offer. Serving at 52% at the moment, Federer, clearly not where he needs to be, so hasn't totally been at ease with his rhythm this early stage of the match. First serve and Safin aggressive off the return, taking charge of the point early. Coach Roach and in front of him, Marit's girlfriend, Miroslava Vavranek. Sorry, Roger's girlfriend. Federer was. 15.30 on his serve in the seventh game of this match and was able to get out of it by what he does really well, consistently in difficult situations, coming up with the big point and the big serve on points like this. Huge point here in the context of the match. Five all, 30 all. Oh, the forehand that is so deceptive. Almost impossible to read. And this is an in indicative of how much topspin he gets. The ball's low, he's going over the highest part of the net. He needs to whip it up and down quickly. That's not easy. And watch the reaction. Federer, a little pump of the fist, knew how important that was. Oh. Yes. Look where Safin is to return this inside the baseline, going forward and hit with authority. Even the speed of Federer unable to get anywhere near that return. Serve at 169, the return at 145. And annoyed with himself because he made a good return and his that. next shot though was up the middle of the court this one here does nothing Federer says thank you I'll do something Pushing it out, didn't work. Yes. 
Federer is having to work hard because his first serve percentage is still dropping. 47% first serves into play, and that's allowing Safin to have a good hit at the second serve and putting the great Swiss player under pressure. Opportunity there. And Jeff, this is shades of two nights ago all over again. Remember, deep in the first set, Andre Agassi had a few chances against Federer. He wasn't able to take them, and from that point on, it was all downhill for the great man. Will it be the same for Safin here? So he doesn't take his chances. spoke about that quarterfinal match it was the ninth game of the first set where Agassi had three break opportunities and was unable to convert tight call probably a correct one Safin didn't have that many break chances but he did have some opportunities in the previous game will it cost him the most simple shot he played a remarkably audacious drop shot this one here Federer from behind the baseline Good what down. a choice couldn't have played it better has Safin at his mercy only needs to hit it in he can't believe it oh that drop shot was to die for it was just an incredible choice So he is human after all. We were beginning to wonder. Oh, that was a big miss that forehand down the line. A love 30 opportunity at 5-6. Safin, boy, he's relieved not to be under that sort of pressure. Now at tiebreak record should we get to it Federer has played 200 won 120 Safin has played 266 won 146 so Federer just with a little edge in percentages but as we saw against Olivia Rockus the other day Safin is a force to be reckoned with in a tiebreak with his ability to get a free point he has to get there first though good foot skills Missed it. Oh, improvisation again from Federer. How does he get this back? That's just improvisation, and it, and it was low. And Safin couldn't believe he had to make another shot. Extraordinary racket skills and reactions from Federer. It has really not been clear which of these men is going to win this set for any of the 70 points until this one. 
And that is a great time to do that. Safin saves a set point for Federer. Again, he's leaning to the forehand there, Federer. You can see he was expecting a different delivery. Henrik Molina just asking for cell phones to be switched off. In a way, it would be a shame if we didn't get to a tie break here because I think both players really deserve it. Federer thinks that he deserves an outright win and he's one point away from it. Safin's previous serve on set point, 2.17 out wide. Well, the second serve got up pretty high, lots of kick on it. Federer trying to hit a heavy slice return, keep it low. Found the tape. level here Peter and they are pasting the ball aren't they off yep. the ground it's just rocketing across the net can he withstand a third set point Safin throws the racket in the air. It was only a point or two here or there. But in that game, not as many first serves went into play. And Federer made him pay the price. After 45 minutes, the deadlock is broken. Federer leads by one set to love. That's the way you do it. Well, again, when you least expect it, better coming up with something a little different, serving and volleying. Beautiful first volley, depth, placement. As easy as you like, Safin stands and wonders what he has to do. Federer holds a love game at the start of the second set. Well, it's difficult for all of Federer's opposition to have genuine mental resolve. He's taken everything before him. He hasn't lost a set of tennis all year at Federer, not here at the Open, not at Doha in the first tournament that he played. The last time he played Safin in the Masters Cup, it was straight set. So how do you keep mentally positive against this man with great difficulty? Thank you. 
captain of. And it's, it's, it's when you're in trouble against a player like Federer that you start to push the envelope too hard. You try and play perhaps above yourself. That was Safin trying to play something extra special, a dry volley from low. Last year's final, it was 7-6 in the first set to Federer. And in that set, Safin served at 43%. In the first set tonight, 73%. Excellent point from Safin. But as ever, Federer defensively is very good. Full stretch, keeps this ball low, makes Safin have to hit another good shot, and then one more again. Solid service game for Merit Safin. One game. Federer's ability to be able to hold serve is something to behold. When he faced Takeo Suzuki the other night, he hadn't lost his serve in six previous matches in 2005. And as soon as Suzuki did break him the other night, he breaks straight back. Some spin going on there, and it was finally ended with a thumper. Well, he got just a little bit too ambitious here, Federer. He's trying a, a side spin shot. This is a good heavy slice. Now he tries a side spin where the ball's going to slide inside out. See the ball bounce and drift away. It was just uh, well, overly ambitious at this level. It's a sign of his growing confidence. Opening for the Russian right at the start of the second set. His first break point of the match. Yeah. 
youth. And once more. When Federer's first serve has gone into play in this match, as we watch this overhead in replay, he has won all bar one of the points. That equates to 96%. No. You said that at the wrong time. Yeah. This has been an ordinary game from Federer's point of view. He's become a little overambitious. That was another shot that I'm sure Coach Roach will ask him when it's finished, what was that all about? It was poor choice. Just a little mental slumber here from Roger Federer. As Jeff Masters said, this game has been untidy, uncharacteristic. Safin with a second opportunity to make him pay the price. Game on. A very uncharacteristic lapse in concentration by Roger Federer. He got a little sloppy, he got a little cocky, and Safin gets the lead. These balls will be put out to pasture after this game.
perfect follow-up game for finish. Marat Saffin, just conceding the one point. So the ball change comes at the fifth game. That Federer will have the forward. opportunity of serving with them, but Saffin's got the break. Well, he needs to regroup here, doesn't he, Roger? He's uh, just temporarily gone off the, the boil. Mentally, he had a lapse, and uh, Saffin's made him pay, but Saffin certainly can't rest with one service break. He need, needs to keep the pressure on. While Federer may be in this little mental lapse, see if he can strike again. Well, he knows it's not going to last long. Guess right. Shot. No, didn't quite curl it back around. Not enough. Federer is starting to serve and volley a little bit more. Served at the body on that occasion. This ball curling, but not quite enough. I won't repeat it fully, but the important word there was lazy. I think it's mentally lazy at the moment. It's uh, perhaps the first time that he's been pushed hard mentally in the tournament. Second row and good catch. Well, by Federer's standards, it was not a great game, and yet he still only conceded the one point. Really tucked him up with that first serve. Quite erratic the last three games, mistiming the ball. Better up. What? There's another unforced oh, no. error there, streaming from his racket. He's made 22 unforced errors for the match and 11 of those have come in this set and we've only played five games of them. Could this be a big turning point in the match? A love game for Marit Safin. The momentum has shifted unquestionably. Just how long will it stay this way? It doesn't stay this way for too long with the number one player in the world. But he's out of sorts. His timing's off. Safin doesn't like it. He's going to go and have a look at the mark and point to it. It was right there. Enrique Molina says, I'm too far away. And that looks like he might have had a case. Hawkeye says way wide. 
Two, two aces, not much question about the second one. But the good thing is, Safin in the zone. No song and dance about that first one. Gee, that was a, a very good lob from Safin. And Federer required all of his backward skills, his leap to get this, and then some. Serving and volleying at the body. Has he snapped out of it? That's a love game as well. So after the last sit down, not a point against the server. It's still 4-3 Safin with the break. But that will work just as well. The old one-two play wide to the forehand, wait for the return, and then deep to the backhand. First point of the eighth game of the second set. Safin leading 4-3 with the break. Courtesy of a perfect defensive lob, Federer got himself out of it. Yes, it's a shot that uh, not many players play these days because there's not many one-handed players around. But Federer, as you said, worked his way back into the point with that wonderful slice defensive lob and then ultimately was able to take the initiative. I just sense there, Jeff, that Federer has just backed off his groundies a little bit and is now more content just at the moment for place rather than pace. Make sure he gets them into play. Well, he's certainly middling the ball now. Two or three games ago, he's framing them. And I think you're dead right, Peter. He's just looking for a little bit more percentage play. The shot was on, he had time, he measured it. But again, often when you're playing players that are quick, and certainly Federer is quick, you tend to go for a little more, push it closer to the lines than you would like. And here it comes. Break point. Missed it. Yes. It's up tight, Federer, isn't he? Scream of nine there, which is my poor attempt at German for no. Oh, yes. Wonderful point from Safin. He hit two terrific angles earlier, but only the speed of Federer negated them. And he had to come up with a third shot. This is a wonderful stretch. Federer pushing it back. 
into a neutral position. Saffin says, well, I'll go the other side. And found his mark beautifully. Too good. Coming back at 139 kilometres an hour for the winner. That one a fair bit quicker than that at 2.13. Saffin withstands a break point. Saffin leads five to three. Cements his advantage in the second set of what has all the makings of a classic semi-final. We don't say this too often, but the number one seed serving now to stay in the set. Oh. Just snatching at things a little, just rushing a bit. Federer has upped his first serve percentage in this set. Like that, he's serving at 69% in this set. Oh, not far away. The big man's chasing everything. He's very agile for a big man. He's just said six feet four. The volley couldn't have been much better. Saffin's there, had a good head at, hit at it. Double fault number three. None yet for Saffin. Pretty good achievement for a man with a big serve like him. Speaking of big serves, Federer comes up with a good one at a good time and says to Marit, OK, my friend, you've made the running here. You serve it out. Playing tough, Saffin, good percentage tennis. Wanted that first point, and he wanted to make Federer earn it. He couldn't. The first time the big man has made a double fault error. And he went away from his comfort zone. You could see uh, Lunger in there on the edge of his seat. And I said went away from his comfort zone because he likes to spin the serve into the backhand on the second serve. He went for the big serve to the forehand. Can't oh. 
come up with a great serve on a massive point for him. The number four seed with the chance to level it up. We are going to at least four. Safin takes advantage of one sloppy game from Roger Federer and makes him pay its one set apiece in the semi final. That was against Carlos Moya in the Tennis Masters Cup. He's annoyed Saffin because he had a genuine opportunity there, worked his way into the point, had a three-quarter court ball that he needed to do something more with. We nearly felt the brunt of his anger then. That ball is smacked away. He probably heard it smacking into the window of our commentary box. Well, he's so tall, Safin, that when Federer misses the first serve, spins the second, it's getting up only to shoulder height of Safin, who really jumped on that last return. Hit both lines at 203. It's that speed again. That speed, that spot. There's a little come on there from Federer. He knows he's in a, a real battle here and he's going to have to keep his adrenaline level up, his concentration up. Safin looks focused, confident. And as Peter mentioned, we've really got a match on our hands, it seems. I think the crowd's a little nonplussed at the moment. Not much barracking going on. The players have just been to the change and toweled down a little bit. Had a sip of water. Now all of a sudden people trying to get into it. Federer won't make an issue of it because that's not the way he plays. That looked like it got the line. said a while ago that Federer gave himself a little come on having won that first game of the third set. He's worked very hard at getting his adrenaline level, his arousal level, if you like, at the right, exactly the right degree over the last couple of years. He felt for a while he was too low, too flat. Oh, that's a gem. That's more like it. The team 
Watch how he sets himself here early. Watch how he keeps his head down and finishes the shot. And immediately he's finished the shot, he was recovering to the centre just in case Safin had picked it. So it's hit and move, like a boxer almost. Big chance here for the number one seed to make an early impression in the third set and maybe to shift the momentum back his way. And a couple of errors from Safin. That will do Federer's confidence the world of good. It will just buoy him a little bit. That adrenaline that Jeff Masters was talking about will be flowing through the body a little bit more swiftly now. That's the advantage of serving first in a set. It's one break, but if Federer holds here, it will seem a lot bigger than that. He's serving for a three-love lead now. One and a half hours of enthralling tennis so far. Oh. Now it's Safin's turn to make elementary errors. Oh, my goodness. You won't find that in the coaching manuals. Well, that's just improvisation. Control of the racket here. This returns right at the feet. It hits an inside-out volley here. from Marit Safin and as Jeff said it's only one break but it looks a lot more than that three love in the third set one set apiece There's another come on from Federer, just keeping himself up. He's not satisfied with one break, he wants another. Not a bad serve. Federer, with one hand, able to get the racket back and forward quickly enough and still have time to hit over it. What reactions? Just his fourth backhand winner for this match. Well, it didn't work for him there, but at least the number one seed showing a little bit of positive positivity here at the start of the third set. You can afford to do that when you're three love. He won the point, but I think he's still wasting some first serve opportunities, Saf, and he's getting 78% of first serves into play. But Federer is just blunting them, blocking them back, and the point is starting from a neutral position. So he's wasting, to some degree, that high percentage. There he was. He was going to serve and volley then. That's good.
Look at that ball drop. It was over the net by three metres, I suspect. Hit yes. with pace, but still dropped. Look at this, way over the net, but dropped so fast with that spin. Safin thought initially that ball was going out, but then recognised, I'm going to have to hustle here. Too late. All of a sudden, the pin's gone back in the firing mechanism. Until that minute in this game, it was starting to come off the middle of the strings for Roger Federer. Safin with a point to get on the board. More first serves, please, Merritt. Translation. Safin on the board, still down the break. A mixed game for Roger Federer, but some signs that he's getting back to the player we've become so accustomed to in the past 12 months. Anyone's match, though. Four to one, the double fault count. Federer with the four. He's getting plenty of opportunities to have a good hit at the Federer second serve. He did the right thing there because <laughs> if that had have gone straight down, that racket would have been in more than one piece. Jeff, we saw him against Rockus the other day, and he actually changed when he got a bit of frustration out of his system. Yes, it does. It does get a, a lot of pent up emotion. Somehow able to get that return of serve back. It was not pacey at 156. It was kicking. It was high up towards his head. And he was just able to invent something and make Federer play at it. Started with the return, Federer's second serve was wide. <laughs> and he's made that shot on the line, break back point. <laughs> Outstanding volley. I don't think there was 
another volley opportunity that yes. would have worked. Full stretch, taking the pace off the ball, achieving angle. Wonderful shot, and that was at break point. Look how low he is. Head over the ball. Wonderful shot. Oh, nearly got the outside of the line. He went for the big kicker. Yet again, Safin with a second opportunity to return normal service here in the third set when Federer looked to be cruising for a little while at the start of this set. Courtesy of the early break, the Russian fights hard. Great shot. What a contest this man is providing. A clinch fist to his support box. Marit Safin breaks back. I was about to say before that the bookmakers and those who frame the odds on sporting contests would have had Federer a favourite, a slight favourite albeit, after he got the early break. But it is as close to an even money bet for both players right at this stage of the match as you could imagine. That's a terrific point. The first serve of Safin was 220 kilometers an hour out to the backhand. Federer okay. got it back with one hand and with top spin. Full stretch. Great return. Safin too good. Equal faster serve for the match for Safin. Well, there's a little bit of panic coming from Federer. This is a high risk decision. And the first point he, of this game as well, he hit a short approach and came to the net. He's looking for, or searching for options. His move way forward, the intent to attack was always there. And when the serve of Safin was just a fraction short, Federer all over it with the off backhand. Oh. 
So the scoreboard levels up. Three games off. Merritt Saffin must be wondering what the tennis gods are doing to him on his birthday last year. On his birthday, he played the number one player in the world, Andy Roddick. Today, he plays the number one player in the world, Roger Federer. And he's giving him a real run for his money. Well, that's an ace, but before that serve, serving 44% of first serves into play only in this set Federer. But a lot of that has to do with the quality of Saffin's return. He's been making plenty when Federer's put in a good serve, like that. So when Federer has found the range and hit a quality serve in, they've come back. And that's put him under a lot of pressure. He's tried to go for more, and he's missed. The first serve percentage at this point in the match is from Federer is not good enough. Still searching for options, Federer. And some of the options he's choosing are a bit ordinary. 13, 15. Not sure if that was a drop shot or just a short approach, but on this surface, it's not very effective. show to all the 15,000 people and one bottling them up at the other end. Better are still looking as though Federer has a good look at the line. Chair umpire Enrique Molina has not had to do much so far. Hopefully it'll stay that way. Turns his head a little early sometimes, Safford on the forehand as he did there. And of course, when you turn your head, your body turns early, the racket comes through early, and you hook the ball wide. Mini opening here for the number one seed. Shaking his head as well he might, Federer. It was a tense point, neither player wanting to take the initiative. Federer and ultimately with a wonderful opportunity to approach the net. He made an unforced error from it. Oh, that's a massive one at a big time in the match. Airborne, when he gets that forehand with any time, he just unleashes everything up off the ground. Trunk unwinds like a spring. Hundred and 
164 kilometre an hour forehand, that last one from Federer. and he thought it was going wide and then in the, ultimately it was pretty close. Saffron again exceeding 200 kilometres an hour with a serve going wide to the Federer forehand. And break point down, a chance to level up at four all. What a fight this is. Federer shakes his head, knows that he just can't fight this man off yet. Four against all. into double figures in the ice count Roger Federer. The quality return of serve there that allowed Saffin to take charge of the point. He's continuing to step up, stand in on the Federer second serve, take it early. And that's what happens. When someone's attacking your second serve, you become anxious. You tend to look down early to get yourself set. And in so doing, you drag the serve into the net. Perhaps the most important few points of the match to date right here. One set all, four all, 30 all. What a shot from Saffin. Took the bit between his teeth and hit that Federer forehand on the rise. Unlucky. Was a touch.
and he makes it look so easy. When you consider the situation, it's a tough volley. But again, how quickly he gets to the net, well positioned to make the volley, metre and a half inside the service line. Worrying time for the coach, Peter Lundgren. Former coach of this man, now the coach of the man at the other end. Getting into the rally, Safran is having equally as good a chance at winning it as Federer has. He's got as much pace from the back of the court. And he's getting these chances because the Federer first serve is still nowhere near good enough. 43% only in in this set. Another good serve from Federer. Again, in that range that we have mentioned so many yes. times. placement was where he normally puts it the speed was within a five kilometer range that he normally operates in there it is again it's almost like they've drawn a target on that spot that one at 208 Oh, what a shame. Extraordinary <laughs> folly from Federer doing a 360. <laughs> and it all counts for nothing. A wry smile on the face of the best player in the world. fights his way back both players showing true grit here it's 5-4 in the third Safran at the moment, matching Federer from the back of the court. sign of outward frustration but we have seen a few of those in this match it's been very rare before this semi-final not only this week but in the past 12 months well how did he get that return back Three unforced errors from the racket of Federer off the ground this game. 
and he's being made to hit many more ground strokes here tonight than he has at any other stage this tournament. There's an illustration in real life of what Hawkeye was showing us. going up in the middle of that rally with Seth and Ball on the baseline. That one clearly wide. Federer now just two points away from a two sets to one lead. As well as Merritt Seffen has played. He must bear down hard here. And he does. It was a tentative point from Federer, a second yeah, serve, and as we know from the Hawkeye display before, Safin has hit every second serve down the centre to Federer, and still Federer did nothing with the return. He just chipped it back into play. He's tight, Federer. He's waiting for Safin to lose it. He's not about trying to win it himself. the showreel shot anyway and it would have been pretty good had it counted but what does count is that Safin once again fights his way out of adversity in this extraordinary match just wide who is going to be first to crack it's been one break of serve apiece in this third set Better at looking to be the first to six. And then the worst he can hope for is a tie break.
的技能。That one went a long way up, but dropped down on the court. It just hit the very edge of the、uh, the roof and came down quickly. Another two meters, and it was stuck up in the roof. And another two meters, and it would have been a warning. Yeah, let's have a look at the speed of that. Well, there's a shot. Two o three. That's about as comfortable as he has looked on his serve for a while. Love fifteen. That first point in games like this can be so important. Marat, Marat, give him a second, please. Fairly unsubtle way to remove a bug, one would think. <laughs> oh, more hesitation from Federer, letting that ball bounce that ultimately landed on the baseline. He was hoping it was going to go out rather than take it in the air for a drive volley. And then follows it up with a missed ground stroke. There's tension there. Really getting down on himself, Roger Federer. Can't afford to lose his head in this situation. Oh, oh. Both players admonishing each other. Certainly wasn't a positive return. Safin probably expected something better. Hesitated himself. And that was very close to the baseline. And finally, Safin cracks, and so might his racket. Enrique Molina taking a good look at it. And it's broken, so he's going to get a warning. What a big point in the match! Now we spoke about the fact, Jeff, and there's no sign of a warning coming yet. We spoke about the fact that Safin was a different player after he let the frustration get out of him the other day. Against Rockus, well, he certainly <laughs> let the frustration go the other day. He. Threw the racket down, belted the drinks carton as he went past. Not so today. Now, why is there no warning here? Well, that's a question only the umpire can answer. I'm not sure whether there's any discretion allowed in this circumstance, but Enrique Molina has given him plenty of rope. Two set points. Oh, shot under extreme pressure. He's got a new racket. He's got Federer all over the net. He's down set point, and he's come up with a screamer. The approach is not bad. Look at that. It's three quarter court up the middle, so not a lot of angle with which to work. But still, he finds some. Maybe it might have been a good tactical move. He's one for one with that racket. Set point again. Long. <laughs> Federer is two sets to one up. It's all changed in just a minute or two.
Federer serving with new balls at the start of the fourth set. Jeff, you've cleared it up that as Mats Philander looks on that there is a bit of discretion in the ruling and if so, then credit to Enrique Molina because I think he felt the right thing in the situation. Oh! Well, the umpires do have to feel the mood of the situation and the mood of the environment without letting things get out of control and that wide volley from Federer unfortunate for his cause still at 30 15 though ah! unforced error count in this match 39 Federer 40 for Safin takes a good long hard look at it and whilst we watch the replay Safin walks to the spot no 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 está más para la T <laughs> plenty of good spirit out there amongst the two players and the man in the chair And Federer was just standing there and he didn't even look around. He sort of just half turned his head and he was just listening for the call, whether it came or not. And he was relieved to hear it. First game of the fourth set. Federer served first in every set and has held his serve in every set. Well, it's important here for Safin to just get back into the groove. He'd lost. He's lost the third set. He was just a little distracted first game there in the fourth set, having a little joke with the umpire, but he can't afford to be distracted here. He's down two sets to one. Love one. Got to pay full attention again. Once more, Federer becomes the bookie's favourite. Look at this shot from Safin right at the toenails of Roger Federer. And if Federer is the favourite, it's only narrowly. It's been that sort of match. Roger's a bit keener to preserve the life of the bug, and the bug is flicked off court and hurriedly flicks back on. Love going for the Russian. One game more. Federer is still operating at a remarkable success rate when his first serve goes into play. He has won 49 of 57 points when the first serve goes into play. That equates to 86%. The problem is, Jeff, he's only operating at 54% of first serves into play, and that's not good enough. No, he won't be happy with that. Oh, that's brilliant. 
Again, made possible by the speed with which Safin makes his ground. He's a big man, but he gets there two, three, four big strides, head over the ball, and able to drag it back cross court. Wonderful. There's the reply. Lucky number 13 in the aces for Roger Federer. Just a few points against the server so far in this fourth set. Oh, beautiful body serve right at the sternum of Roger Federer. He could do little more than bunt it back. Gentle for the server at the start of this fourth set. Safin has not lost a point on serve in his two service games. Serving and volleying a little bit more often now. Safin, particularly serving at the body, is a good strategy against anybody, but certainly against Federer. And backing it up with some good volleys. Let's have a little hypothetical here, Jeff Masters. If Roger Federer is to get through here, this is going to do him the world of good going into the final because he has had the easiest passage you can imagine to this point. I agree with that absolutely. As long as he can uh, win this in four sets, it would be rather an ideal preparation. If it goes five tough ones, not quite as good. Still got a way to go to get home here against Safin. Oh, well. Shaped up for the drop shot, pushed it the other way. Even if Federer does buckle, he could live to fight another day because he's two sets to one up. Yeah. 
The other thing I'd like to ask you, Jeff, this match being played on a Thursday night in Melbourne gives the winner two clear days off before the Sunday final. Is that an advantage over either Roddick or Hewitt? It's interesting, isn't it? It's uh, almost too long of a, a break. It could be to your advantage if you've had a particularly difficult, exhausting fortnight and an extra day's break would, would be good for you. But that hasn't been the case for Federer. Oh, that's right at the Yow. body. to get a couple of days break. He's had such a hard slog to get to the semi-final stage. He's attacking the body of Federer, all right. That's probably the best point of the match. It's in attack, counter attack. Supremely fit. You don't often see Roger Federer taking the opportunity even just for a second or two to take a break. 19 shots in that last rally. Safin was staring down the barrel momentarily. How many times in this match has he been able to fight back, though? And he levels up three apiece in the fourth. I mentioned that the ticket prices obviously go up as the tournament goes on and you pay a premium to watch a semi-final, but whatever these people have paid tonight has been worth it. Whichever part of Australia or the world you happen to be watching this telecast, hope you're enjoying it as much as we are. It's 25 to 11 on a Thursday night in Melbourne. Interesting choice from Federer. 30, 15. Good chip from Safin. Oh. Well, he didn't get full contact Safin with the pass but he got just enough width here that just kept drifting wider of Federer he thought he had it covered initially this is a clutch point at this situation in the semi-final three all and 30 all Well, a 
bit of good fortune for Federer. It took a fair piece of the tape. You're right, it did, and I think it's only the excessive topspin from Federer that helped push that ball up over the net once it hits, hit the tape. It was pretty much on the bottom part of the tape. It was so much spin that helps propel the ball up and over. tennis from both men Safin serving 3 4 Volley from Saffron wasn't easy. Literous half volley kept very low. Has good slice. Look how low it stays, but still Federer gets down under the ball, up and over. The most acute angle. the first time that Federer has been aggressive from the first court off the second serve because remembering that Safin 99 times out of 100 goes down the middle to the backhand and up until this point Federer has just been chipping them back. and continually be adopting that pattern on the second serve Jeff he's thinking he seems to be thinking about all other aspects of his game really clearly is it something that he's just not thinking about or is it just a set plan that's what I'm going to do and I'm going to do it every time well look, only he knows the answer but he has become very predictable but I've been amazed that that Federer hasn't taken more toll of it in fact last year he did Federer he took Great toll of the fact that the second serve of Safin was continually going down the center tee. He ran around and hit some big forehands tonight. We've seen none of that. I'm not sure whether it was a half volley or a volley. I think it was half of each. It was a late decision, but he had the skill to pull it off. Fourth set going much the same way as the first. Holds of serve all the way in the first set. It took until the 12th game for the break. And the break came against Safin. Critical game here. Ninth game, fourth set. first point is it time for Safin to become adventurous to throw caution to the winds all out attack
Merritt showing himself to be not much of the humanitarian. Oh. If he's alluding to the fact that it hit the bug, the bug must have moved a long way because he moved two metres further inside the court to step on a bug. Some of the crowd wishing for off the net onto the umpire's chair back into play. A little optimistic. That was as high a ball as we've seen here in this fortnight. Would have hit the roof had it been closed. goes from Federer which is indicative of how concerned he is about this match full stretch here <laughs> Saffron from three meters behind the baseline Federer can't believe it not much conviction in the throw of the racket but plenty of frustration a little touch on the tape on the way past Saffron comes up with a clean winner it's the all-important first point as he serves to stay in the match. Just his eighth base. The Saffin who made the final of 2002, we would have been expecting 25 or 30 a match. Generally, we got it. does not drop a point in what could have been his exit from the championship. He has stood up to every single question that's been asked of him tonight, Marit Safin. And he's posed a few himself. Five all. Miracle first volley. <laughs> Serve and volley. Safin read it. The return was at the toes. Still managed to hit a good quality deep volley. He's come up with a wild one tonight. Roger Federer off both wings. 43 unforced errors. The winner count is up surpassing that at 49. He was in a bit of trouble in the 11th game of the first set, the one that mirrors this one.
Went for the same serve and it worked. Well, it's a good serve. He was forced to go for it because Safin was stepping in, looking to be aggressive off this backhand if it came his way. Look, he's inside and just surprised Safin by the width and quality. continues it's 11 strike games with serve in the fourth set Federer looking up to the scoreboard at the top of Melbourne Park. Quick to move forward here. Safin took the ball on the rise, giving Federer less time to recover. Great serve. He's really targeted the body tonight, Jeff. He has in the last uh, set or so. The ball swinging in right at the at the right hip, which is the perfect direction and the perfect swing. Not flat at the body, just curling into the body. The 15,000 here would be happy to see it go to a tie break, and I think most of them would be happy to see it go to five. It's probably not going to be one of those matches where you walk away and say, what about the tennis in that match? But people will walk away and say, what about the battle those two guys had? tie break good game from Safin he's confident and I really think Federer is going to have to be a little bit more positive with his attitude in this tie break if he's going to win it Safin has a little extra weight of shot at the moment Federer still perhaps just a little passive Fasten your seat belts. Here we go. Federer wins the tiebreak. It's all over. Safin wins it. We go to five. It had a look and fell on Safin's side. Well, it was a right choice from Safin going after that second serve, and he was a little unlucky. He's got to make something happen. He's trying to make it happen. <laughs> Got away with one there, Federer. Precious point against the serve. Gives Federer the mini break at the start of the fourth set tie break. Now 
Now, surely he must attack this second serve. Almost certainly he knows where it's going. Too good. Brilliant. What a time to do that. Well, absolutely. It was a short ball. He shaped to hit an approach and the last minute cuts right underneath the ball. Safford not looking for it. He was in a good position to go for that Federer as far as being inside the baseline. How big a point was that? Touch on critical stages when the pressure's on is difficult to find. That's not bad either. He's up to 10 aces. 206 down the middle. Remember, it's only one point against the server. Both players coming up with an ace so far in the tiebreak. Safin needs this point. Otherwise, the match will be on the racket of Roger Federer. Listen to how quiet it is. It will erupt soon, though. That time on the attack. Now two points against the server. Federer is eyeing a spot in the final. Well, that's where that consistent second serve down the centre tee comes back to haunt Staffan. Federer was waiting for it. Dispatched it. Two more points and he can defend the crown. Wasn't a perfect approach shot, but Federer still tense, lifts up here, frames it. He'd make that passing shot more often than not. He served 16 aces in the match, many of them from this court down the middle. So we're back on serve. Safin, just when he looked down and out, is back in town. My the last three points against the server. Safin's serving has been a feature of this match. What he wouldn't dearly pay for two first serves into play right here. Oh. 
high hole. <laughs> well, he made a good one. Federer made an equally good return. Safin, the weight behind the ground strokes at the moment is impressive. Federer is having to react, and he's been caught late, often. It's either going to be set point Safin or match point Federer after this point. Oh, that's incredible. Peter Lundgren can hardly watch. Well, that was miraculous. It's just so difficult to come up with touch when the pressure is this extreme. It needed to be perfect, and it was. 12 months ago, this pair fought out a lopsided final. It has been a stirring contest tonight. It may be one point away from finishing. Federer eyes the final once more. Could they come any better on match point? Safin hangs in there. What is he doing with this shot, though? That's just extremely low percentage. He can't believe it. That was a, a remarkable point. We're back to that situation again. It's either a match point or a set point coming. Five of the past six points have gone against the man serving. Peter Lundgren was looking downcast a minute ago. Now he looks optimistic. One more serve to come for the number one seed. He's got him. We might be going to five yet. Well, remarkable tennis. The return set up the point. Incredible Seven. angle. He's just full of aggression and positivity. Safin. Every ounce of fight that he has in his body he's used to date now. Perhaps the time has come for one big first serve. Oh. Called a fault. The crowd was up in anticipation. They were hoping it was going to be the big one. Sets it will be. Jeff Saffin, for the first time in the match, has the opportunity serving of making first. a statement by yep. serving first. Well, it's a distinct advantage at any time, but particularly in the fifth set, it's a, an appreciable advantage.
Safin thinking it may have caught the outside of the line. Just the way he would have asked to start this fifth set. A love game. Doubt that uh, Leighton Hewitt and Andy Roddick would be watching at the moment. Leighton's probably still receiving treatment after the last couple of matches that he's had. And Andy's probably at the roulette table at Crown. But I don't know whether he's thinking of... Uh, red and black at the moment but if he was thinking numbers i think he'd be thinking oh 12 10 14 12 in the fifth would be nice and probably he'd be hoping for merit stage I think merits a slight edge he's uh, stared defeat in the face he's beaten it he will feel that it's to be his night Federer will think maybe this isn't my night he's serving second he has a, a niggling injury and Saffin's on fire no long Safin pretty cool and composed with one notable exception tonight. Federer is not moving around the court with any sort of fluidity at the moment. One game Just one point against the server there. But does a little stretch there Jeff there were a couple of times there that he just thought well either it's in or it's out but I'm not chasing it yes perhaps he is a cool customer Certainly, Federer was slow to react on that last hit. He was moving to his left, had to change direction, and move back to his right. He was thoughtful about it. Short angle, incredible top spin. Love 30. No matter what the trainer was able to do for Federer, two more points here would make him feel a hell of a lot better.
Great stretch from the big man. Well, more and more you get the feeling that this is Saffin's night from Love 30, two big serves, and then a third serve with a, an excellent volley. That was the 301st point of this match. Outstanding. What a rally. And Federer can't even blow out a candle. 30 shots, side to side. Pumping himself up. Best ground stroke rally yet. We saw long rallies last night with Nalbandian and Hewitt, but none at that pace. What a time to do it as well. Break point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fancy having a sense of humour in that situation. Merritt blowing it over the line. Well, he's stepping up without fear at the moment, Safin. He's so confident in his game tonight. 30-40, big first serve. And the backhand back behind Federer. He might have had some practice today, blowing out the candles on his birthday cake. Actually saw a second serve from Safin to the forehand of Federer. That's got to be the first, or if not the first, one of very few tonight. He's been again very predictable with that second serve, but everything else has been so good. Yes. Pretty handy late in the match, 2-11. Ace number 11. He's in a zone pretty much at the moment, Safin. Feels confident that he can uh, do anything. Federer wincing a little after that point. Aces, a great time to do it. Safin withstands Safin two break points two and Final still point. keeps his nose in front in the deciding set. Oh. 
locked in though. Feet moved quickly enough there. Well, that'll do nicely for Roger Federer after Saffin really struggled on his previous service game. A love game for the number one seed. Reminding you, there is no tiebreak in the fifth set. In this set so far, whenever the first serve has gone in of either player, they've won the point on every occasion. The first serve really doing some damage in the fifth set. <laughs> Different strategy on that return for the first time from Federer tonight. He went back deeper to take the second serve and hit a high looping return deep rather than stand in and slice it. Great return. Quick reactions here. Makes the first one. Never going to make the second one at close range. He's lost his first point when the first serve has gone in the set. Terrific play from Saffin again. And that was the 100th time that his first serve has gone into play in this match. And of those times, he's won 73 of them. That's pretty good going. Federer is operating at even higher than that. 85% of points he's won when the first serve has gone into play. Quite extraordinary. Strange choice, that one from Federer at 30 all. Putting the pressure on himself, basically, by bringing Saffin into the net. coming Federer will be serving with them in the sixth game it's 3-2 Saffin oh. 
Serving with new balls in the sixth game of the final set. No, he's a little slow getting across yeah, to that. Not a lot slower, just a little bit. And it might be just a little too much. stings when it hits the line official at 198 kilometres an hour. He's in good shape, Safin. He's making his move. Aggressive return of serve. Federer on the back foot. This could be it right here. Federer desperately needing a first serve and a good one. That's not bad. One of the Federer specials up the middle on the line, 203. Just as well. Second service. Safin's moment is at hand. As we said, Federer is a champion, but he has not been placed in this situation under this sort of pressure many times in the past 12 months. He shows the hallmarks of a champion. He needs to do it once more, though. Extraordinary. Seventh double fault of the match for Roger Federer. The break belongs to Marit Safin. He is within two games now of a third Australian Open final. Well, that double fault coming as a result of very aggressive returning of serve from Safin off the Federer second serve. He didn't know where to go there. Federer with the second serve. He knew Safin was going to be after it build up of pressure bringing the desired result for the Russian At least. This marathon five setter, which is now three hours and 41 minutes old. Safin has only had his serve broken, broken three times. This would not be the time to make it four. About time. That's the first time tonight. He's run around 
and hit that forehand and taken a risk on the Saffin second serve. It might be too late. It's now or never. His serve has held up remarkably well on the big points tonight. And this is as big as any. Federer on the attack the last time on a second serve from Safin. No attack there, and he paid the price. But it did go to the forehand. Yeah, credit to him. He uh, switched it up, and Safin Federer, sorry, was not ready for it. He had to improvise. Lucky number 13 in the Aces department for Merritt Safin. He is just one game Safin away now from victory. Well, that's indicative of how he's been going about his business here, and it's put so much pressure on Federer. Stepping up inside the baseline, taking that serve on the rise, and giving it a hit. There's no question in my mind he's a half step slower at the moment, Federer. He was late on that shot. It wasn't particularly wide of him. That's great. Yes, Federer. What a shot under... The most extreme pressure, 15-30. That was to go down two match points. That was the only shot that was going to win. And it's been played in such great sportsmanship. Safin, the first to acknowledge it. He's hanging in there. As great champions do. So Marit Safin, on his 25th birthday, is in control of his own destiny. Looking to make a Grand Slam final for the fourth time. Tony Roach looks on as his man Roger Federer faces defeat. Can 
one he fought on. It is just the one break of serve, remember. Very positive point from Federer. Amazing. That was very oh, makeable. Is there one more twist in this story yet? Missed his first three first serves of this game. And at 15.30, comes up with a beauty. Can he fire down another big one here? Can he what? 15th ace. 210 kilometres an hour. It's one point away from being over. Please, white legs. Federer's ground strokes hitting the tape during that rally, kicking up, almost landing beyond the baseline. Ambitious from where he was. The coach looks happy. He may be a lot happier after this point. Second opportunity for the number four seed. Twenty-six. Yes. <laughs> he went for his favourite shot, the backhand down the line. It was a chance. He wasn't very wide, and he didn't miss by much. I have to say. Saffin looks fresh, fresh as a daisy at this end of the court. 
He looks as though there's plenty left in the tank. He may need it. Extraordinary shot from South from uh, sorry Federer. He couldn't have played this any better. Federer at full stretch. How he was able to pull that back across court, I don't know. Safin then unable to convert two match points. Federer within one point of getting it back on serve. Oh. Yes. Tennis of the highest quality from both players. We didn't see it, but how about the return of serve? And look at the reaction of Federer. He just dips his head and says, what have I got to do? Safin looks fresh, Federer looks tired, but even though the needle's nearly on empty, he's still managing to find something. Well, that's just good net instincts, isn't it? Just reading the play, being prepared to move at exactly the right moment to cover the options. Second break point. That's gone. Can you believe this? The match getting close to drawing into its fourth hour. Into its fifth hour, in fact. It's that wide one at the backhand that's giving Federer some difficulty. Certainly, it's tough enough if you're feeling 100%, but there's no doubt this one here, he's struggling to get across. Safin's not struggling to get across, moving beautifully. This was a good forehand from Federer. Hit with pace. Safin's there quickly enough to turn it into a passing chance. This match is getting better as it goes on. Yes. Oh, well. 
He tried the serve at the body and Saffin bunted it back to bring up his third match point. Two on his own serve. Can he do it off the Federer serve? Right, please. Thank you. This he should have made. He just steered it and gave Federer, as quick as he is, a chance to cover up. Yes. The only thing that is not being used in this match is the back of anyone's chair. Whether you're here or whether you're watching around Australia or around the world, this is sport and dramatic sport at its finest. Five games all. Jeff, we said before, a couple of hours ago, I think, that we were talking about the fact that it hadn't reached any lofty, lofty standards. It was just a great battle. But the quality of the match has gone up as the match goes on. Indeed it has. Thank you. Nobody's losing points. They're all being won. And there's got to be some self-doubt, surely, now in the mind of Safin. He's played brilliantly, and he's still been unable to put this man away. was only down the one break of serve but if he were to get out of this Roger Federer this would rank as one of his great comebacks he looked down and out Horribly close, called good, no argument from Federer. What a shot at 15.30. Five all in the fifth, on the line. Or was it? No, it wasn't. Federer walks away.
Not the slightest inquiry from Roger Federer about that previous point. He accepted the call and moved on. We're still on serve. It is 6 5 Saffin. Twenty aces for Federer. Unbelievable pick up from Federer. And unlike the US Open, no tie break here. And Jeff Masters, I say thank goodness for that. Yep. Let's keep it going for a while. <laughs> Absolutely. The players, I think, would be happy with that as well. No one would want to see a, a virtual game of Russian roulette, which the tiebreakers can be to determine this outcome. has mentioned that the doubts may be creeping into the mind of this man. Remember that he had two match points in the ninth game. How long ago does it seem that Federer was at match point himself? fourth set in the tie break that ended after the match had been going three hours and eight minutes it's more than an hour ago needs a first serve here Saffin love 30 got just what Dr. Masters ordered One thing to request it, another to have the mental toughness, the skill, the courage to find it. Love 36 all. Shot. Federer. 
perhaps a little too passive again on the return of serve. It was really designed to get the ball back into play and allowed Safin to dictate. And at 15.30, a little more pressure from Federer would have been expected. Remember, the winner of this match has a day longer to recover than the winner of the other semi-final. And the way this has gone, boy, are they going to need it. Oh, yes. Safin was looking for the deep cross court, which is the shot that is the greater percentage. What she moved to the middle and then starts to veer to his left, has to come back quickly to the right. Beautiful change up from the Swiss. A break point to get the advantage in this final set for the world number one. Another tail in this match, Federer, 14 break point opportunities, just the four breaks of serve. Safin gets out of jail. Keeps his nose in front at 7-6. We can see Safin by comparison going after the Federer second serve and been re rewarded on many occasions that was point number 375 did well at the overhead. It's a good log. Height and depth. Safin attack again. Marat Safin has had two chances. He's got two more here. Please. 
います。Whatever your nervous twitches, biting fingernails, pulling at your beard. Now's the time to employ it, especially if you're the coach of Merritt Saffin. Still a match point. Yes. There's that 2 3 down the middle again. It's the Federer special. In fact, it's the Federer Express. Eight double faults now for the man from Switzerland. Safin remarkably has served 202 points in this match, one double fault. One cancels out the other. As he did in the ninth game, Marit Safin squanders two match points. Federer grits his teeth and hangs on, and we're level at seven games apiece. You can only admire the performance of both players, Federer, and how he's kept his nerve, serving second in the fifth set. Every break point is a match point. I think with the exception of really just one genuine opportunity there, and that was at 1540, second serve, Safin made a poor forehand, but otherwise, Federer won the points. Safin didn't lose them. New balls, new racket for Roger Thank Federer. You, Thank you. I don't want to make too much of this from Federer, but as he stretches here and comes back, he's hunched over coming back. It would have been nothing he could do against a serve such as that. Oh, 
Brilliant. And Sakin. Sakin leads. Eight games to seven. Once Nine. more, Roger Federer is going to have to find something. on the face of Marit Safin shaking his head after that clean winner. <laughs> Federal shoulders have slumped a bit now. It's foolish to write off a champion, but surely he can't keep on withstanding this barrage. Saffin's had a couple of blocks of two match points. Can he set up three in a row here? Did it? It seemed as if it skidded off. If he was playing cricket, that would be a Yorker. Almost underneath the racket of Roger Federer. Four have gone. Five and six are coming up. Surely he can't do it again. That's enough. Federer finishes the match on his knees. Marit Safin gets a belated birthday present. A spot in his third Australian Open final. Roger Federer is human after all.